Awesome. So I am Noah, the music director here at Spinnaker Radio, and today I'm interviewing... You want to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Ashton Chase, and I'm a local rapper, actor, singer, writer from Jacksonville. Awesome. And uh, today we're going to talk about your music a bit. Do you want to describe your your sound, kind of? Yeah, I would say I'm a genre-bending rapper, so I, I like to definitely take liberties with the kind of music I make and you know it can go from anywhere from like an internet money type sounding beat to like some kind of like afro punk more like sing songy stuff so it does kind of have some variation yeah I was listening to your music a lot before this and it was definitely like I could not put a word on your specific genre if someone was like <laughs> yeah just put a name on a genre I was like no that's not, yeah, it's not no. possible it's a beauty trap it's a beauty trap it's just yeah, you know, yeah. I, I don't want to, I don't like to put a genre, dude. It's such a box. I like to just make what I want to make and express myself through good music. Yeah, yeah. I don't like, I don't like genres in particular either. A lot of time, as like a music director, I have to put genres on stuff and it's so frustrating because it's such a box. But... Yeah, it's, it's such a box, but I mean, I guess I'm a rapper, but yeah. I definitely yeah. like because some of your up. songs make you want to, you know, like jump and go hard, and some of your other songs you just want to like chill out a bit. So you definitely mm -hmm. like change the vibe a lot for each song. For sure, for sure. And it's just because I have like different moods and different personalities that come out, especially that I want to capture musically. You know, like just because I know I understand what it's like to have like the mood swings and just be feeling completely different one week than you are the next week. Yeah. No, I got you. So what else did you say you do? You're an actor as well? Yeah, I'm really into, I'm getting my, actually, I'm getting my acting, my VFA in acting right now at Otterbein University, which is in Columbus, Ohio, but with everything going on, like, I'm sticking around here and just kind of doing classes online, like, figuring it out, so got to finish up my last year online. Gotcha. But, um, I do acting, I do improv comedy, um, I write, uh, like, screenplays and plays, um, yeah. Sweet. Is there somewhere we can find that stuff? Do you have a YouTube or anything like that? Oh, dude. So here's the thing. Okay. My screenplays are still like, there's this lady that I'm working on my first like, full length screenplay. That's not for class. Like I've obviously done some like school assignments that I haven't put out just cause I feel like they're not to the quality that I want them to be. That makes sense. But I definitely have one that I'm working on right now that I'm going to publish up and then get my YouTube started and start just like filming them and doing it all. It was just last year was a really busy year for me with, especially with the music. I was like kind of started my music. So I haven't really been focusing as much on the cinematography. Yeah. That makes sense. Has, has COVID and everything happening changed your like process? Like have you, have you been able to make more stuff or less or focus on different stuff with all this time? Now? Like yeah. I feel like it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I was really able to, you know, hit the music hard. And that's what I wanted to do. Like, I feel like when I was at school, like, I just didn't have the proper time to actually, you know, manage market and try to promote my music while also writing it and recording it. Mm -hmm. So it's been a really, and a blessing in that sense. I've definitely had no shortage of time to write and record demos and get a lot of music done. Yeah. Um, craft my writing tool, my writing tools really. Uh, I have that screenplay I mentioned I was working on, so that's you know coming into fruition. I just gotta finish conceptualizing and retweaking dialogue and whatnot. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's definitely. I've heard a lot of artists have had a bunch of songs they're sitting on now with everything going on. There's, There's just so, so much, much time, time to write and so many things to write about. Like with everything going on, I mean. Yeah. There's no lack of material. Oh, yeah, for sure. So uh, how did you become a musician? How did you get into it? What, what brought yes. you into this? I've always had just this desire for music and passion for music. I mean, I, when I was way younger and like middle school type, I, I thought I wanted to be like an NBA, like a basketball player. Um, and then like I did my first like school play and I really fell in love. And my friend was like, you should start auditioning for more of these. And so kind of through that, I kept auditioning for productions and whatnot. And I just ended up quitting football and basketball and deciding I wanted to be an artist. And then for the, I've always, but while I was doing acting, I've always just had a passion for listening to music, 
watching music videos, you know, the whole spiel. I've been big into the music culture and I fell in love with Childish Gambino and Chance the Rapper and kind of guys in that generation. Um, and they really inspired me. And then my friend Christian, who was kind of my first friend that I met, and I, I went to school in Ponte Vedra for a long time. So he was like one of my first friends I met. And his brother Nate is a rapper. Um, his name's Nate Day. And he just really would show me a lot of music always. Like he would come in the room and like play a song and I would just fall in love and be obsessed. And honestly seeing him kind of do his thing was really inspiring to me. And so like, I kind of started building up the confidence to write my own music. So I'll just practice like, you know, writing bars, writing raps, but not having any beats or anything to them. Um, and then I met Shane Malone, uh, who is kind of like become one of my, my partner in crime almost. Uh, and we worked together my sophomore year, freshman year of high school. Yeah, early high school, we started working together and making some songs that were <laughs> definitely not, you know, like the most top tier, but we were just doing what we loved and putting them on SoundCloud and sharing and practicing. And after like a couple years of doing that, kind of started getting better. I started working a lot with Devin Johnson or Dev the Goon or whatever from St. Augustine because we just go way back as a theater and he's one of my friends. So, you know, I started getting some studio time and more beats and like really trying to make cohesive projects and then I guess like from there everything just kind of started like ramping up slowly and within the past two years it's just been like zooming that's awesome yeah everyone always makes fun of the SoundCloud stage but every artist has to have that you know like you can't you, oh, don't, yeah. you don't start out good no one starts out no. good you gotta like take a few years of being awful posting it on SoundCloud before you actually understand how to do music literally you get it bro like you have to be out there making the raps and sending it to your whole contact list and like, trying to get people yeah. to listen you gotta be bad. it's funny that you mentioned childish gambino because I was, I was talking to my girlfriend about your music i was like that's that's like the first artist i got the vibe of because like he does a lot of like the rap but also like some r&b chill stuff mixed around yeah. and that's right. like kind of the feel i got from your music where it's like sometimes it's like rap that makes you angry and sometimes it's like stuff that really is just chill r&b like hip-hop kind of stuff that's like blessing. He, he's literally my, the most influential artist to me in just all aspects of art. Like mm -hmm. he's really inspired me because he, you know, he also does film acting, which is something that I'm really passionate about. He writes, he directs. So he's definitely shaped the kind of artist I want to be and the kind of person that I've like been becoming, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. He's amazing. So uh, how long have you lived in Jacksonville? I've lived in Jacksonville. Almost my whole life. I was born here, um, and then I lived here for about like three or four years. And we moved to North Carolina when I was really young, and I don't remember like a lot of portions of life. But I know we moved to North Carolina for about like three years, uh, and it was also Jacksonville, North Carolina. Surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> so you've always then, lived in Jacksonville. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have a fetish for Jacksonville's, but um, we came back after a couple of years and then we moved to like the Jack's beach, Ponte Beach area. And then we just stayed in Jack since then. Sweet. Um, yeah, school for a couple of years. Yeah. So how would you describe like the Jack's music scene or like your experience with it? So I think I'm still pretty new and fresh into the Jack scene because like when I really started the, the brunt of like my music, I feel like I was in Columbus primarily but like all my friends were in jacks and the people listening were in jacks but i wasn't necessarily like making all the in-person connections with the other artists and stuff as quickly as i would have liked to have been but mm. now since i've been here i feel like i'm kind of emerging a bit more into the scene and i think the jack scene is really one of the most special ones because there's so much raw underground talent and there's so many people that are doing it because of the art, because they love the art and they have a message they want to spread or a story they want to tell. Not necessarily because they want to make money, which obviously everyone wants to make money too, but like, you know, you run into artists like The Black Toilet or like, or like Wreaking Havoc that are out here producing for up and coming underground rappers for free just because we like each other's style and flow and we bounce off of each other and, you know, then we're collaborating and it's so easy and everyone's so supportive of each other uh, i love yellow steve and what the guys with cpu food have been doing uh, i mean i think the jack scene the jack scene is it's just so special to me and i've performed at jack rabbits twice and 
both times the audience was electric and the people just every everything about it the artists the people the whole community is really special to me and i think it's a great place to to set up shop for a little and make some art yeah i love jackrabbits jackrabbits always has a great like energy to it it's so it's not a huge venue but that kind of makes it better too like the room it's great, like, it's great. i assume you can kind of pack it out a little yeah oh yeah i think i've been to jackrabbits like over 10 times it's great that place is it's awesome so, so what would you say it's like being a black artist in the jacksonville scene do you think it's it's different than like being a black artist in the ohio scene or do you how is it um yeah the the Ohio scene, I, I feel like there's a lot more black support here. Like everyone is, especially just right now too, you know, black voices are being amplified and I love it. And everyone is so supportive. And there's, I'm finding, especially in Jax, I'm finding more and more opportunities where it's like, you know, I'm trying to, like a photographer trying to capture some black beauty or just random instances where like, you know, there's other new black artists that I haven't met that are emerging that are wanting to collab. And that's really cool. And that honestly means a lot to me. I think it's really important for black artists to stick together and, you know, create together and form relationships, even if it's, we're not necessarily making music together. So yeah, I saw you had a really cool, like a uh, photo shoot on your Spotify, like about section. Oh yeah. 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 What was that from? That, that was sick. Is it the one where I'm in like the cheetah stuff? Yeah, I think so. The yeah, poses so are great. At, school my best friend um his name is matt and he's a he's a photography major and when we met i mentioned to him that i was like really interested in modeling and he was like well we should just shoot together sometimes and then we had like a shoot and it was pretty freaking baller and then after we did that we we're like we got to keep shooting together so for all his projects in school like he would just call me to be his model and then we'd hang out smoke a little and conceptualize some stuff and conceptualize you know ideas and one of them was just like what if he <laughs> we went we go thrifting a lot so we were thrifting and we saw these cool ass cheetah bands and he was like dude we just need to make a set and <laughs> bands. it was kind of like a uh, shot on you know sexuality and hypersexuality and you know masculinity and find like toxic masculinity and kind of finding like the, the feminine portion of masculinity so we bought like girls pants and took my shirt off and i was just like let's just take some pics and put on some music and just kind of vibe it's really easy when it's your friend yeah those those looked great by the way i thought those were sweet i was looking at that i was like this is some of the best images i've seen on someone's spotify you just looked like you're having fun <laughs> thank you so much man. that means the world i love being in front of the camera man sweet yeah it did. so uh oh also about the, i like your hat the hat's sweet too thank it's you. a little is there a little gator on the top of it <laughs> Yeah, it's a little Lacoste <laughs> crocodile. Oh, that's sweet. Awesome. Right, so, uh, is there any announcements, shout-outs you want to make or anything like that? Oh, yeah. I'm working on... I'm working hard right now, man. I have a project that is somewhat in the works that I'm going to kind of keep my mouth shut about for now because I think I want it to be... I want it to be more of a thing and I want to talk about... It's it's surprise yeah, yeah. coming. Just wait on that. But I've got a new song. My next release is going to be a song with Dev the Goon called Django, um, and it's produced by Shane Malone. So shout out Dev for the feature, um, and shout out Shane for the boss production and the boss sampling. Uh, and I'm gonna come out with a hot video with it. It's gonna be done by JG Directed. So so we haven't shot yet, but we've been the shoot's coming up really recently in about a week and we've been talking back and forth and so far he's been great to work with and he's a great videographer and i love all the work he does so shout out to him for being a good collaborator awesome is it hard to do any kind of like in-person collaboration right now how you guys plan around that kind of stuff with you know it's yeah. hard to like yeah that sucks it really does suck like we have to we obviously can't meet in person to i mean we could but we don't meet in person to talk about stuff we just text or FaceTime and then you know on set we'll we're gonna film in a big field so we don't have to really be inside or anything and we can keep everyone socially distant and safe sweet that's definitely <laughs> the yeah. biggest thing but after talk but we both talked about it and we were like I definitely think we want to still be able to create even if we have to tweak some stuff to deal with the reality that we live in right now 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of artists making a lot of music, but it's hard to put videos to it right now because, I mean, you can't go film stuff that often unless, like you were saying, like a big field makes it easier, but you can't do like cool stuff in a studio for for videos exactly. right now. You can't really shots where it's like a bunch of people like moshing like, or like yeah. close to each other just because, yeah, and those are the cool shots sometimes. <laughs> yeah, those are the cool shots. Yeah, I can't do that kind of stuff. Well, awesome. Thanks for the interview. It was yeah. nice. It was nice having you. Anything else you want to say at the end here? I know I already asked you for shout outs and stuff. Anything else? Um, dude, I mean, shout out to you for being a damn good interviewer. And Spinnaker, honestly, you guys threw me on that Jack's Greatest Hits radio. And I that was awesome. I was so freaking happy about that. And, like, I'm just uh, just glad to get, you know, put on any playlist by any cool radios like this. Or I just like what you guys are doing. I like your music reviews. Uh, I love the whole team. Um, Julia. Um, uh Carissa, God, I love Carissa. She's so amazing. <laughs> Julia showed me, you know, kind of put me on to you guys. I don't even know if she's a part of it, but. Yeah, but she's a part of Spinnaker. She's not part of the radio itself, but she's part of Spinnaker. She helps us a lot out, so she's awesome. Oh, and shout out Speed Demon Records. That's a great collective I'm a part of that Shane started, and there's some really boss artists. And that's someone I also forgot to mention. Um, I feel like through Speed Demon, is I've met some really some great artists and some great connections that have helped me a lot so far um just kind of get my feet on the ground because i'm still kind of emerging on the scene sweet awesome thanks thanks for having <laughs> dude oh yeah thanks so much for talking to me man no problem